Okay, so last time we left off, we were talking about understanding memory and understanding short-term memory. And so we saw some really fun clips about change blindness, how you do our little change blindness exercise. And that's all a lot of fun, right? Really interesting. And you're probably wondering, what does that have to do with? Yeah, with designing an interface. Well, let's take a look at some of the design implications when we're talking about short-term memory. Because there are a lot of design implications. We tend not to think about them. But when I start actually talking about some of these implications, I will bet anything that you will be able to relate and have experienced many of them. I know I have. Very irritating. All right. So in looking at some of the design implications, I'm actually going to jump down here to our instructions first so we can really illustrate the problem. Now, this is actually a message from Windows. It's a real message. This is from the Johnson book, by the way. And here, the user is trying to configure their wireless. And so obviously, there's a problem. And I'm not sure why that's smudged there. Is that the screen? No, I guess that's the image. So here, it gives you a list of instructions. Let's read the instructions. Click OK to close this dialog, then click Advanced. On the wireless connection properties that appear, click Advanced. On the Advanced Option page, change which networks your wireless connection can connect to. Click OK. In Advanced Dialog, and OK on the wireless correction properties to apply the change. Yeah, OK. What, what's the first problem? Are you going to remember all that stuff? Because what is the first thing? Click OK to close this dialog. What happens when you click OK? Yeah, you close the dialog. OK, let's say, all right, let's say you actually decided to read it for the whole thing first. What do you do next? You now have clicked OK. What do you do next? You click Advanced. What do you do after that? You click Advanced. How many remember that you have to click it twice? OK, four people. I never remember. Anyone know what happens next? Yeah, something about the wireless or advanced option page or something. All right, you're the user. Now what do you do? You're like, OK, now what? You call IT. The stupid thing's not working. How happy are you? No, if you are the IT person being called, what are you thinking? What is wrong with this person? Can't they follow directions? On a rainy day. Yeah, and on a rainy day. So what, what does that tell us in terms of short-term memory and this type of design in your interface? Right, you didn't take into account the use of short-term memory at all. Because we're not going to remember all of this. We're lucky if we remember one or two steps. But how common is something like this? Has anyone experienced something like that? Similar? Yes, I have many times. Not just in Windows, by the way. I happen to be picking on Windows. I've experienced it in websites. I've experienced it on the Mac, not quite as much as in websites. Right? I've experienced it with custom applications. So what happened? What do you think the IT person was thinking about when they were designing this? Right, they gave them step-by-step -step instructions, right? What, what, you know, you as the IT person, you are focused on providing the user with the instructions so that they can hopefully do this. You put them step by step, you're, you're, you're done. What were you not thinking about? The user. Now, you're probably sitting here thinking, once again, God, what is wrong with that person? I would never do that. Except it's really common. 
And unless you are able to take your attention solely away from what your goals are and think about what the goals of the, use, of the user are and think about what the limitations of the user happens to be dealing with such a short-term memory, you will make similar mistakes. Doesn't, doesn't that happen when, um, like, when you're making a program, you're like, for you it's that easy that you don't, you don't intentionally uh, think about how hard will it be to the user. So for you it's like, okay, just go here, click here, click here, click here, and that's it. Like for me, like, I'm, I'm not that good at teaching like my grandfathers like, to, to go to Facebook and all that, and not to upload a picture. And I, and I just go to like, you don't click here, click here, click here, and then like, it's lost. Wait, 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 let me write it down. Right. So there's, that's, there's, there, that's not that easy for, for the user to. Right, yeah, exactly. It's very, right. Right, so you do it, we do do it unconsciously. Right, because it's easy for us, we know the steps. I mean, click, 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 there you go. Very easy. So it's not that we intentionally do it. Yeah. I mean, that's a great point. It's not intentional. To us, it's very natural. And very normal. That's why it actually happens so much. And actually, your example with your grandfather and opening a picture on Facebook is an awesome example. I do the same thing with my other relatives. You'll find that I pick on my father a lot in my classes. He really is very brilliant. Just <laughs> a little too uh, detail minded sometimes. All right, so when we are looking at some of the short term design implications, there are some in addition to an interface when it comes to instructions or errors. Now there's something I'm going to be talking to you about later on in the semester called modes. Now what is a mode? Well very briefly it's where the same command results in different outcomes depending on the current state or mode of the product that you are using. The simplest example is a car. We all know how to drive a car, right? What happens when you press the accelerator? Well, you may accelerate. You may accelerate in what direction? It could be reverse. It could be forward. It could be that you're revving your engine. What's the difference between those? Yeah, it depends on the gear that you're in. Each of those gears is a different mode. So you're still performing the same action. You are pushing on the accelerator, but the resulting action based on that differs depending on the mode that your car happens to be in. Very, very similar with other types of products, including computing products. So one of the things we'll talk about later on is, particularly when you're dealing with some more complex products and complex systems, it's actually better not to have modes. Right? If, when it comes to driving a car, and the accelerator, that's pretty simple. That's pretty basic. When you're talking about a technical drawing program, for example, let me see, what is a technical drawing program that's popular these days? AutoCAD? Where are you in edit mode? Or are you in, I can't remember what the other mode is. The same command can mean different things. Much more complex. So try not to use them. It can be confusing. Now, how many of you are familiar with search engines? Hopefully everyone. Now, when you go, these days, when you go to Google, let's say you go over to Google, or Bing, or whatever your favorite search engine is, and you type in, let's say you want to do a search on um, a healthy diet for your cat. And you type in a healthy diet for my cat and you click search. What do you see on the results page? Do you remember? You get a list of results, right? Is there anything else that you see? Pictures. Well, pictures too. The number of right. How many? Right, how many results? Is there anything else that you noticed? What you searched. What you searched for. It will give you the exact terminology that you used. Why do you think that's important? Well, you want to make sure you're searching the right thing. What happens if you don't get the results that you want? What do you usually do then? If you're going to keep using the search engine. You rephrase it. 
All right, so you rephrase it. You type in your new phrase. So you can say, healthy diet cat. Right, you can type that in. Okay, you get a phone call in the middle of this. Now you go back. If it doesn't tell you exactly what you searched for, are you going to remember? Probably not. And in fact, if you looked at the very early search engines, that was one of the problems people had. They would sit there and they would type in their phrases, they'd get a bunch of, bunch of results, and then they couldn't rem remember the exact terminology that they used. Because it can be very subtle differences. Is it plural or not? Is it present tense, is it past tense? Is it a synonym? So when you go to search engines these days, you see that one of the lessons they learned is that, well, you do need to, again, keep in mind our capability in terms of short-term memory. So it was a very simple solution. Right? We are really used to it these days. But initially, it wasn't there. 